Thank you very much. Vice-Chancellor, Professor Masri Tanga. Uh, Professor Anthony Stark, members of staff, council members, diplomats and graduates, parents and family members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly honoured by your invitation to speak today, especially as it is the graduation of that most important category of graduates, teachers. This is an occasion for congratulations and celebrations Congratulations on your wonderful achievement at graduating with a qualification in education and celebration of this achievement and your commitment to the teaching profession and education in general. It gives me great satisfaction today as I look across the audience and I see the people we honour here today, those of you who are graduating. I feel really energised and positive to see all the new teachers produced by this university, as well as so many practicing teachers who have taken the opportunity to study, study further and who take lifelong learning so seriously. No matter what part of the journey of lifelong learning you are completing and celebrating today, congratulations. Congratulations to you for choosing to be a teacher. No matter what stage of development you are, whether starting out or advancing in your career, and congratulations to your families for supporting you in your choice and through the journey it has taken to succeed in your studies. There's a story I, la I like based on a slam poem by Taylor Marley, which illustrates to me the importance of teachers and the impact they have in children's lives. It's called, What Teachers Make, or rather, if things don't work out, you can always go to law school. Dinner guests were sitting around a table. One of them, a lawyer, was talking about the importance of his work and how much he makes. And he starts going on about the problem with education. He says, what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided his best option was to become a teacher? We all, he says, know that it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can do and those who can't teach. A teacher at the dinner party decides to bite her tongue instead of his and resists the urge to repeat what they also say about lawyers. After all, this is a dinner conversation. But then the lawyer turns to her and says, You're a teacher, Susan. Be honest. What do you make? Susan looks at him and says, You know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I make kids believe in themselves when no one else would. I make a D feel like a presidential medal of honor and an A feel like a slap in the face if the student didn't deliver his best. Do you want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write. I make them read, read, and read again. I make them smell, spell, I'm definitely beautiful, I'm definitely beautiful, over and over again, until they never misspell either of those words again. I make them show all their work in maths, and I make them hide it in their final drafts in English. I make them understand, if you have a dream, then follow it, and if someone ever tries to judge you by what you make or what you do, you pay no attention to them. You know what I make? I make a difference. What about you? Indeed, teaching makes a difference. Teachers work with children and adults, developing and shaping their minds and hearts, their cognitive abilities, their physical abilities, as well as their social and emotional maturity in ways that include contributing to the skills production for the economy and the country, but also in ways that go far beyond mere monetary measurement. As Andy Hargreaves describes it, ideally schools are places where, in addition to learning, know, uh, to learning to know and learning to do, learners also learn to be and to learn together. Teachers are the linchpin in this equation. Teachers develop future generations 
leaders, accountants, doctors, caregivers, citizens who are well grounded and caring, knowledgeable and have developed the capability to contribute meaningfully to their country. And yet, teaching is far more than this. As Albert Einstein put it, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creation, in creative expression and knowledge, not just to get somebody to know something and contribute to the economy, but to inspire them to awaken joy in learning. Teachers that we look back on with gratitude, as Carl Jung suggested, are those who, suggest, who touched our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary material, but warmth is the vital element for growing plants and for the soul of the child. Going back to why we are here today, I want to emphasize that this is an afternoon of real celebration for the graduates and their families. And because it is time for celebration, I'm going to reflect on some educational issues that we should celebrate that directly impact on teachers and the universities that educate and develop them. Everyone here will know that education is under pressure. As a country, we continually criticize ourselves over the apparent lack of achievement in the educational arena since the dawn of our democracy. There is a public perception that we are in a very deep educational crisis and often teachers are blamed for this. But what I want to suggest is that it's not all doom and gloom and there is cause to celebrate, especially in the area of teacher education and the work that universities are doing to strengthen and improve it and in doing so to improve education as a whole. And you all are products of that. In 2009, we held a national summit on teacher education and development, and flowing from that, there was an intensive process that led to the publication of the Integrated Strategic Planning work Framework for Teacher Education and Development, a 20-year plan that was launched jointly in 2011 by the Ministers of Higher Education and Training and Basic Education. The planning framework provides a blueprint to guide our collective efforts to address teacher education and the development challenges in the country. What is important to note is that this plan is not just a plan on paper. It is being implemented. And this university is part of that story. And we celebrate in implementing the plan. The planning framework allocates the responsibility for leading efforts to strengthen the capacity of formal teacher education in the national higher education system to the Department of Higher Education and Training. To this end, the department has implemented a three-step approach to strengthen and expand teacher education capacity. And these steps are both sequential and overlapping. The first step involves ensuring that the current teacher education capacity of our university are, is fully utilized. And to this end, we have been working with universities through the Education Deans Forum and the enrollment planning process to support the maximum number of initial teacher education students that can, can be accommodated without compromising quality. Teacher education has been identified as one of the scarce skill areas to be targeted for increased enrollments at universities and so is one of the priorities in the process. The enrollment plan that is currently in place has supported head count enrollments in our universities in initial teacher education for programs to grow from 45,828 in 2009 to 72,266 in 2013. That is a massive 60% increase in just four years. The associated growth in initial teacher education graduates over this period is from 6,315 in 2009 to 10,350 in 2011. That is an increase of 64% over that period. The system is on track to be producing more than 14,000 new teachers per annum by 2014. 
that is, by 2014, we will have more than doubled the teacher education graduate output in a period of five years. Indeed, this is something to celebrate. What we need to get now, together with our partner, Basic Education, is the effective employment of teachers. But I won't dwell on that today. We are about to start a new five-year enrollment planning process, and once again, teacher education will be highlighted. While what I have been speaking about is focused on the quantity of teachers we are producing, Quality is just as important, and the quality of teachers is also linked very directly to the quality of our teacher education programs. As the McKinsey report emphasized, the quality of an education system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. We introduced a new teacher education qualifications policy in 2011, and part of the reason for introducing that was to work with our universities to improve their programs and the quality of teacher education. All institutions, including yours, are working towards this, taking seriously the need to prepare newly qualified teachers as knowledge professionals. The commodity they deal with is knowledge. It is the main tool of their trade. But teachers also have to know how to use these knowledges they possess to teach others successfully and responsibly, particularly in the different contexts that we find in our country. This is not a linear or soulless process. The teaching practice or school experience component of initial teacher education programs has to play a very important role in this regard. And we have invested in research into teaching schools and professional practice schools that will inform us as we implement a network of such schools to support the development of new teachers in line with the plan. The second step in our process involves expanding teacher education capacity on existing university campuses through the allocation of funds to develop new infrastructure. Teacher education has once again been prioritized for support. The DHET has allocated infra infrastructure grants to universities to improve infrastructure capacity and with this, within this, from 2010 to 2011, 452 million was allocated to teacher education infrastructure projects across our universities. In the current cycle, running from 2012 to 2014, a further 670 million has been allocated to 18 universities to implement and improve teacher education infrastructure projects that are aligned to the goals and objectives of the integrated strategic planning framework. And again, this university is involved in this important work. The last step involves establishing new campuses for teacher education, where required and where appropriate. In February this year, our minister opened the first such campus at Siabwishwa in Mpumalanga. This was the former Ndebele College of Education. This campus will become part of our new university that we're developing in Mpomalanga province, and we will be establishing that this year, together with a second university in the Northern Cape, which will also have a focus on teacher education. The establishment of the Sia Bushwa campus was specifically focused on foundation phase teacher education to begin with. It will expand to include intermediate phase teacher education. This establishment is part of another very important and exciting program driven by the department. It's called the Strengthening of Foundation Phase Teacher Education Program, and we're currently implementing it across 20 universities. Your, your, your university, of course, is once again playing a part in this process and is passionately involved in this program. It includes development um, of lectures, research, the establishment of a new journal on childhood education, as well as a research association for foundation-based teacher education. And I have to say, I'm really delighted that so many of you here today are graduating as foundation-based teachers. 
And I think that is another cause to really celebrate. For our department, over the last three years, foundation-based teacher education has become a major focus, particularly the development of foundation phase teachers able to teach in African language mother tongue. It's a critical area of shortage and a critical area of need in our system. We believe that the foundation phase is the most important of all. Without it, none of us would be able to read, write or count. In fact, all of you here today who are able to read need to thank the foundation phase teacher. These teachers have laid lay the foundation for all further education. Anecdotally, my mother was a foundation phase teacher and she laid the foundations for many young ones over 40 years of teaching. I calculated that must have been around 12,000 young people that went through her hands. And today they are lawyers, doctors, teachers, accountants and so on. And she keeps meeting them and they keep thanking her for the work that she did. She came from a breed of teachers who were proud of their profession, who stood up for what they believed in, and who would work tirelessly, not only for the seven hours a day required by law. I learned from her what it meant to be a teacher. I saw how she worked, without ever complaining, sometimes at all hours of the night, not because somebody said she had to, not because she was being paid a huge amount to do this, and not because of any of those other kinds of reasons, but because she loved teaching, she was passionate about it, and she had a contribution to make to young lives. I was fortunate to have her as my role model, and when I became a teacher myself, to know and understand that teaching was not for the faint-hearted. Even so, in my first year in a school, it was a baptism of fire, and I've come to realize over the years that no matter how well prepared you are by your education, you will really only know the reality when you start teaching yourself. And if you are open to it, you will learn from your mistakes as well as your successes, and you will never look back. Remember to give yourself time to mature in your work, and do not let yourself become one of those bitter teachers we sometimes hear about who focus more on destroying lives than building them. You will become part of a much bigger picture that will include the children you teach, their parents, and the community. Take an interest not only in the subject matter you teach, but also in other aspects of school life. Become an ambassador for life and for the growth of spirits. Engage in sport, culture, and other activities with joy and without expectation for personal gain. The gift you give in engaging yourself in the art of teaching and in being of service to your school and the community will be rewarded in a myriad of ways. It will come back to you again and again as you mature in your career, whether you stay in the classroom or not. Be passionate. Love yourself. Love your work. Love your subject. Love the kids you teach. And you will infuse them and nurture their spirits. Going back to where I started with Taylor Marley's story inspired by that infamous George Bernard Shaw quote, he who can does, he who cannot teaches, which as Shulman emphasized was a calamitous insult to our profession and yet one readily repeated even by teachers. Let us together reject Mr. Shaw and his slanderous statement and stand with Aristotle who declared that the ultimate test of understanding rests on the ability to transform one's knowledge into teaching. And with Heidegger, who emphasized, teaching is more difficult than learning, for uh, only he who can truly learn, as long as he can do it, can truly teach. And so we will turn Shaw on his head and shout out to the world, those who can do those who understand teach. And as I leave you here today, I challenge you. Nurture the spirits of your learners. Feed them and challenge their curiosity. Be passionate about what you teach and how you teach. Inspire learning. Dare to teach. Thank you. <laughs>